Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers, thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you a, a bit of a change really. Um, it's what I've called my Thornton's chocolate pouch. Now I'm sure that everybody's chocolated out from Christmas and we've got Easter just around the corner. Um, but I saw this on the spring summer catalogue and thought that looked really good so I decided to have a little play myself. Um, it's with the um, waterfront stamp and it's just here. Um, obviously theirs is slightly different in, in terms of what they've done um, but the, the general idea was from that but I created this it's got a bag of these little Thornton's chocolates inside a little tiny bit squished but not the chocolates themselves just the bag um, and I don't know if you can see but I've also got some DSP just on the inside and then this is just tied up through um, some holes that I've punched in the back um, it's quite a quick and simple. I've done this as a thank you, but like I said, you could do this as a Father's Day or a birthday um, or any kind of gift, really. So I'm just going to show you how I did it. So you need a piece of cardstock and a piece of DSP. This is obviously 12 by 12 DSP. How good is it that I'm using the other side? Very clever. So um, this cardstock is from... Um, 12 by 12 but I'm actually going to cut it down slightly anyway um, but it is basically the same almost the same as an A4 sheet of cardstock which I believe is around 11 and a half inches but I shall check so I'm just going to grab a piece of A4 cardstock that I have to hand and measure that one and it is yeah just over 11 and a half inches um, and just over 29 and a half centimetres so it's not far off being um, A4 and it is three and a half inches wide which is nine centimetres so I've done nine centimetres by 30 centimetres the DSP is also three and a half but I'm actually going to trim it down and again and if you've seen my one of my other videos, and I can't remember which order these are in, um, I generally go by, if I just want to cut a smidgen off something, I use the guide plate on my trimmer, and I use the side of it as a line, or the brown where the brown bit goes into the measuring part, I just use that as a guide. So this time I'm going up to that line, just taking that fraction off, and so when you put it on your cardstock, you will have that nice little border. But obviously now this is too long. And again, there's no technicalities to this. I literally lay it on, see where it needs to be cut. And then I just give it a little mark with my nail, pop it on and trim it. <laughs> and that's as technical as it gets. So. The next bit you can do on your trimmer, because we're just scoring, so I want to score at 5 inches and 7 inches, and that is 13 and 18 centimetres. So my card's going to fold that way, so I need my DSP on the inside. So I've got my snail, you don't want to, sorry, and I'm just going to go down the edge and across the bottom and likewise down the other side and then across the bottom again and if you go a bit off like I did you can always add a bit more what I also did with this one was just add some extra bits just either side of those um, score lines and then you just simply pop it on in place so make sure you're quite happy with your alignment making sure it's straight and then we just pop it on. Now I'm not going to press it down really hard because I need to have a little bit of movement in it because when I come to fold my score lines it will buckle the paper very slightly. So what I do is get my scoring tool and just very gently give it a few presses until I'm happy with it and likewise on this side and I'm hoping, there you go, you see, that's how it buckles. But what I want to do with that is very slowly bend my card. And as I do, that DSP will smooth out. 
and so you can do exactly the same back on the other side because again it will just buckle slightly now you could do the measurements and you could add um you know you could measure it and then do the scoring etc etc but it's it's worked for me there's no more buckling that's how it's going to sit together and the dsp isn't buckling at all it fits perfectly so i'm quite happy to leave it at that so i just give it some pressing now just to make sure it is all stuck and then obviously we've got that beautiful pattern i mean you could turn it the other way and put the pattern on the outside but obviously i wanted to do my stamping so that's my dsp on but i want to do some stamping so this is my front just because it bends a little more so i'm going to use this as my front and it's not going to sit down now is it never mind and i've got my waterfront stamp so i'm just simply going to use the trees to start off with which i'm going to stamp in elegant eggplant just because it's the darker of all the purples as I'm using the Trazzleberry and I simply want to stamp just some trees on the front and then once I've stamped these I just stamp off just some extra ones in the background okay happy with that one so that's my elegant eggplant and then it's not used very much but I'm using the white, Whisper White ink and put my trees away actually because I need the little dotty, dotty bit and that's to go at the top so that they look like stars or snow, whichever you wanted to do and then I've then got the the double sort of flat piece if you like that I just want to put across the bottom and again it's entirely up to you how you stamp it let's turn it round so that I have a slightly different look yeah I'm happy with that I'm not going for a, a perfect effect give that a quick wash off so that's that bit so I now need to put my chocolates inside and my ribbon and my um, sentiment so with the 1 8 handheld circle punch I'm just going to line those up and then I want to punch my holes now it, oh it will go through if it doesn't go through you can always line it up and do them one at a time crumbs took all of my strength <laughs> feeling weak today i've got the beautiful stitched edge um razzleberry which razzleberry ribbon which i think will go lovely with this and then to put my chocolates inside i've actually just put three glue dots on the back because I didn't want to punch the bag as well as the card because obviously that would affect the freshness of the chocolates so I just stuck the glue dots on and adhered them to the back so just pop them on make sure they're central you sort of need to push the bag down a little bit and then I just stuck it just underneath those holes back in with my fabulous darning needle um, and then as you can see obviously there's a bit of air in them but not too much and it's just enough so I want to go through these ones oh this ribbon's going to be too thick to go through double isn't it bother let's try and be clever then not use my darning I have to do it the old fashioned way. Feed it through like this. Okay, so make sure it's nice and 
flat across the back there. I don't want it all twisted. And then the, through the last one. Oh, let's give that a trim because I'm not going to get that through, am I? And then through the front. There we go. And obviously you can just pull that and pinch it together. And then we just need to tie our bow. I think this looks lovely on Rich Razzleberry, actually. I really do. I'm really quite pleased with how that's turned out. We've got so many chocolates left in our house from Christmas. I'm sure we're not the only ones, but there's just chocolates for days. Oh, come here. This bow's playing up now. Can't pick him up. There we go. So, as usual, not as nice as the other one, but it'll do. Just pull that along a bit so that it's more central. Might have to have another play with that before I do my photos. <laughs> so, just take off those ends. And then obviously the last thing I want to do... Oh, crumbs, that's too big, isn't it? The last bit I want to do has gone sideways is my sentiment. So I've got my two inch circle punch for some rich raspberry, and then I have the one three quarter inch circle punch for my whisper white. And yes, I have stamped punched it before I've stamped it because um, I don't need to particularly do. Um, you know get the stamping in the the right place and you'll see why in just one moment so the little thanks and i'm simply going to stamp that straight in the center with the rich razzleberry and then i just added a few darker ones around And then just to use a lighter shade, I'm going to go with Sweet Sugar Plum. And I'm just literally going to stamp around it. So I've kind of got a contrast. The downside to doing this quickly is that the generally never straight. <laughs> but hopefully you don't notice that too much. So just pop those ones on there. And then I actually used a tiny piece of ribbon and my glue dots. And I just popped one just on my ribbon there so that it held it together when I just folded it over. And then I wanted to add another one just onto the top and then that sits just there and then you just need to use your dimensionals so just add three to that one which I just pop onto my contrasting larger circle and then just use some fuse, making sure you've got it at the right angle as to where you want it. And then that one just sits slightly off and you can get your fingers inside and just press that down. And there it is, my thank you pouch with the rubbish bow. Have to redo that one. But a quick and simple project with a nice patterned inside, suitable for a gift or a little thank you for someone. Hope you've enjoyed my project. All of my information will be on my blog. I hope you all have a great day. Bye.